I am pleased to welcome you to my conference talk about the application of the theory of critical distances on the crack propagation in segments. As this work was produced in a quite unusual way, I would like to start with a brief introduction to myself. My name is Jonas Schmidt and I am a former biomimetics student. As you can see me in person in this presentation format, here is a picture of me to give you a face to my voice. During my studies, I spent one semester abroad at the Trinity College in Dublin, where I performed a four-month internship at the Department of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering. There I worked together with Professor David Taylor on the healing abilities and fracture mechanics of insect rings. As an engineer, you might wonder why someone would look at it at first sight quite weak material if you have these thin ring membranes in mind. To clear these concerns, I would like to begin with a look at the general advantages of biological materials. In contrast to engineering applications, there is no possibility in nature to use high performance materials like for instance metals. That's why over the course of evolution interesting adaptations have evolved to increase the properties of biological structures. Many organisms possess for instance healing abilities or have like wood and bone hierarchical structures that improve the material properties above the level of a single component. Insecuticle is here no exception. It has an hierarchy as well as it's built up out of single chitin chains that form fibers embedded in a protein matrix. Depending on the body part and the species, the fibers are oriented differently so that you can basically say cuticle is a natural fiber reinforced composite. Due to this structure, the material properties and especially the fracture toughness are surprisingly high when taking its weight into account as well. This makes it an excellent material for flying insects, like for instance the desert locust, which was the animal model of the study. These locusts can pass incredible distances on the search for food, where the rings are loaded in a high-frequent and repetitive manner. As we found out, they can't heal damage to their rings, and a crack throughout the ring would lead to a lower survivability chance, they need mechanisms to cope with these type of damages. One of these fracture-inhibiting mechanisms is the characteristic vein pattern of the ring. In this tensile test here, where a constant displacement was applied to a ring sample with a pre-induced crack, you can see how the crack propagation is partially stopped when the crack encounters the veins. This visualizes an increase in fracture toughness of the vein and an effective decrease of crack growth speed. We wondered now if it would be possible to quantify and predict this effect via finite element analysis. One tool we know for this purpose is the theory of critical distances. It was thought to use the line method in this case. Therefore, the fracture criterion is that the average stress along two times the critical distance needs to be equal to or higher than the ultimate strength of the material. The TCD is widely accepted for standard engineering materials, but so far it was only applied once to a biological material, namely bone, which benefits from totally different toughening mechanisms than cuticle. Our aim was therefore to see if it's possible to predict the crack growth in insect rings using the theory of critical distances. For that purpose, we used the following strategy. First, insect rings were tested in tensile tests to gather material properties as well as the crack pathway and the dimensions of the respective sample. Based on these tests, finite element models were created, which were then analyzed in static observations of successive steps that match the actual tensile test. The stresses and the single steps were evaluated with a line method, so that the prediction results could be compared to the actual crack propagation in the tensile test. In detail, 10 times 10 mm samples were tested in the same manner as previously shown in the video with a pre-induced initial crack, indicated here by the green line. A constant displacement was applied with the load direction being approximately parallel to the cross veins until complete failure occurred due to crack propagation. To match the crack propagation with the applied displacement and to model the vein pattern, the tests were recorded using a USB microscope. The samples were preserved and analyzed with an electron microscope to determine the thickness of the membrane as well as, well as for the varying dimensions. To define later on the critical distance as well as to have a comparison value for the finite element analysis, the fracture toughness was calculated with this standard equation and the geometrical correction factor f. Two of the tested samples were modeled while some simplifications needed to be done here. The veins were modeled as hollow cylinders of two types, small cross veins and thicker longitudinal veins. The membrane was abstracted to be a plane of constant thickness. The dimensions were obtained from the set the electron microscope pictures of the tested rings. The material properties were assigned based on the respective tensile test 
and some literature values for Poisson ratio as well as the ultimate tensile strength of the material as we couldn't determine it from the performed tensile test with crack propagation. For each sample, multiple analyses were conducted where the crack length of the sample was slightly altered from simulation to simulation and the respective displacement that led to that crack length was applied to each sample. In that way, the crack propagation of the actual tensile test was simulated in simple, linear, elastic and static observations. Before the TCD was applied, the finite element model was validated by calculating the fractured toughness based on the resulting finite element stresses using this equation here. That results in a fractured toughness distance relationship starting from the crack tip which could be compared to the actual toughness values obtained from the tensile test. In the end, the line method was applied by averaging for each individual simulation or crack length displacement pair the stress along two times the critical distance L. The resulting average stress was compared to the literature value for the ultimate tensile strength of the ring membrane. With this, we are coming to the results. Here, the maximum principal stress is visible for the first sample with two different crack lengths. On the left side, the initial crack which is about to propagate with the applied displacement and on the right side, the sam same sample with the crack tip directly at the vein where it was arrested in the tensile test at that displacement. These stresses were exported for further analysis. In these graphs, you can see the stresses in orange over the distance from the respective crack tip, as well as the associated calculated fracture toughness in blue. Similar to the previous slide, we see on the left side the results for, for the pre crack, which is about to propagate and on the right the crack at the vein, but now with a displacement applied that caused the vein to fail. The fracture toughness calculation is most accurate close to the crack tip, excluding the plastic zone, so the first peak in toughness visible each time on the left. For the initial crack, the average fracture toughness behind the plastic zone is with 1.18 MPa times square root meter, almost exactly the ca value calculated from the tensile test. On the right, we see the influence of the vein, which is indicated by the black lines. The fracture toughness increases towards the vein and reaches a value of about 2.1, which is again quite close to the actual fracture toughness value at this vein of 2.19. With these exemplary results, we see our simplified model as a valid approach. To get an idea how the crack growth was simulated, you can see in this graph exemplary for the first sample which steps were analyzed. At first, the pre induced crack, similar to that is shown on the previous slide. The next steps are plotted against the distance from the pre-crack to indicate their position in the sample. The orange line indicates crack length where the crack was still propagating at about 0.5 mm apart from the vein. The last two evaluations are directly at the vein, one time when the crack was stopped by the vein and the next one with a displacement that caused the vein to fail. Let's have a closer look at these two last curves. Here the vein walls are indicated by the black lines. You can see that the stress is considerably lower than in the vein wall, probably due to the thicker material here compared to the membrane. What's interesting though is that we see an increase of stress behind the vein with results on a local maximum. Keep that in mind as we will discuss it on the next slide. But first, I'd like to show you the actual application of a theory of critical distances. On the left side you can see the average stress along two times the critical distance as the blue bars for the different simulation steps we've seen beforehand. The average ultimate tensile strength of the material in the respective ring region is given as a comparison value by the red line. While the crack is propagating, we expect the stress value equal to or higher than the red line, and a lower value when the crack is stopped. As you can see here, it applies pretty well in the given case. However, we have to admit that the stress on the last step is considerably higher than expected, which results in a prediction error of about 23% which is still reasonable when having the simplifications in mind that were done. On the right side, we see some part of the analysis of a second sample. Here, the crack propagated slightly different through the vein. A new crack initiated behind the vein before the actual vein failed, which was afterwards connected to the initially growing crack again. In this case, the TCD applies again. When the new crack initiated, the average stress was interestingly slightly below the ultimate tensile strength, while the value was then again higher as the crack started to propagate again, but now with a considerably lower prediction error, here only about 2 MPa higher than the UTS compared to previously about 50 MPa. But maybe we can see here even another fracture criterion given by the local stress maximum behind the vein, which we have seen previously. 
This point of higher stress matches roughly with position of the new crack initiation, so that this point of higher stress might give us the fracture criterion. This new crack initiation was observed often, but it only was visible for a very small amount of time, so that there's the possibility that that's actually the usual way of crack propagation here, which was just not in every case recorded. However, the stress value at the local maximum was usually about 35 to 40 percent higher than the ultimate tensor strength of the material, so that the needle value is somewhat higher than expected. On the other hand, this could be explained as the stress acts only on a very small area, and many materials have often higher strength values for a smaller size of a respective sample. Still, further evaluations with focus on that local stress maximum would be needed to make a more profound conclusion here. Generally, we have seen the fracture toughness increasing and crack arresting properties of the ring veins using finite element analysis. Furthermore, it was possible to predict the fracture behavior of the ring via simple simulations and successive observations of the crack growth. The main fracture criterion was here given by the line method, which is one of very few times a complex biological material in general was described with the theory of critical distances. Perhaps we even identified another fracture criterion given by the local stress maximum behind the vein. Even though further analysis would be needed here to clarify that aspect. Of course, we face also limitations, as in one step of the second model, artifacts and material cause a new crack initiation at a completely other position than the previous one, which could not be predicted with the theory of critical distances. Nevertheless, it is quite promising that it was possible to generate pretty precise results, even though some assumptions were made to the model. This favors the use of the theory of critical distances as a design tool in the development of complex engineering materials with similar barriers. For that purpose, of course, further tests would be needed, together at first simply more data, but furthermore it would be also interesting to see how the theory of critical distances performs when applied to man-made samples with a similar barrier where we know exactly the material properties, which would make the application of the theory of critical distances probably more accurate. Here you can see my references as well as my figure references, and in the end I would like to thank my supervisor David Taylor for the guidance during this work, my, uh, the head of my study program, Professor Kesel, who made this internship possible in the semester abroad, as well as my professor Jan Henning Dirks, who helped a lot during this work, and in the end of course Maeve and Peter for the help in the lab. Thank you for your attention.